global warming is a pile of crap. The problem with climate change is there's never been a day in the history of the world in which the climate is not changing. The climate on Mars is changing, and Mars doesn't have any SUVs on it. It's in the interests of the left to have destructive hurricanes, because then they can blame it on climate change. The ice caps were going to melt, they were going to be gone by now, but now they're setting records, okay? A hearing on Capitol Hill on global warming was canceled because of snow in Washington, D.C. You can't make this stuff up. It's a snowball. And that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out. I found it ironic the president was wearing a trench coat. It was so cold and he's talking about global warming. It's not global warming. It's God's judgment coming to this country. Environmentalism has become a radical movement, something we call the Green Dragon. Scientists from the pits of hell, how dare you take from Yahweh the sovereign right over the weather. When I was six or something like that, I opened up a birthday present that I didn't like. And the person that gave me the gift was there. And, you know, just crushed that person. And you think, well, that's kind of how we're treating God when he's given us these gifts of, of abundant and inexpensive fuel sources. Right. God's buried those treasures there because he loves to see us find them. We were put on this earth as creatures of God to have dominion over the earth for our benefit, not for the earth's benefit. One hurricane is the equivalent of 10,000 nuclear weapons. So every year we've got like 2 million nuclear weapons going off and the planet still seems to be in pretty good shape. So what is it we think we're going to do to damage the planet? And we have more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now, which is actually greening the planet. It's greening the it's planet. greening the planet. That's good. Yes, it is. <laughs> if you believe that mankind is causing climate change, you're deceived by Satan. This is the real solution to climate change. Babies. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live, Climate Night. Today, Julianne Moore. Climate scientist Dr. Catherine Hayhoe in music from My Morning Jacket. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jimmy. I'm the host of the show. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us on a special night. We have a special show for you tonight. Tonight, we're teaming up with all the other late night shows to talk about climate change and the coming apocalypse that will follow if we continue to do nothing about it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a really fun night. And don't even think about switching to another show. We're all focused on this topic tonight. You can't escape. It's basically an intervention. Our future is in jeopardy. You know that show Jeopardy? That's all screwed up. This is even worse than that. <laughs> The latest report from the IPCC, which is the world's leading authority on climate change, just came out. Here's a quick summary of what they found. Experts are calling the world's climate change threat a code red for humanity. Code red for humanity. Code red for humanity. Code red for humanity. They code red for humanity. Code red for humanity. Yeah. Code red is not a uh, good... It, code red, not even as a flavor of Mountain Dew, is code red good. <laughs> and as we saw this summer, this is not a maybe sometime in the future problem. This is happening now. It was 100 degrees in the valley here today. It seems like we get hit with fallout from the climate crisis every day here in California. Wildfires, floods, landslides, which are all amazing things to hear Stevie Nicks sing about. Not <laughs> something you want to experience in life. And if death and destruction... Famine, pestilence, water shortages on a global scale. If that isn't scary enough, think about this. Scientists say climate change could severely impact the world supply of beer. No! See, that's right. You like coffee? Half the world's coffee beans could be wiped out. So enjoy your morning cup of steam. You like chocolate? Same thing. Imagine a world where you, ha you get a carrot cake for your birthday. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Climate change could even lead to massive shortages of rosé. I don't actually know if that's right. I just want to see if the white women were listening. Yeah? No, okay. <laughs> if you are uh, a person living on this planet, your future is in peril. That's a scientific fact. It's like, uh, you know, in your early 20s, you drink all week and you eat a pizza in the middle of the night, three hours of sleep, and show up to work on Monday morning whistling. If you do that in your 50s, you wake up on the toilet dead. This is like that. <laughs> And yes, there are other issues that are all very important, the pandemic, uh, systemic racism, income inequality, immigration, gun violence. But here's the thing, if we don't address climate change, none of those issues will matter at all. The car is going off a cliff and 
we're fiddling with the radio. We are way past climate denial now. For some of us, it's already too late for some of it. The IPPC, <laughs> IPPB says, uh, I can't even say their name. That's how serious this is. No, the IPCC says only transformational action right now will help us avert the worst of it. But that'll be tough because for some baffling reason, climate change has become a partisan issue. Even though some prominent Republicans, like the late John McCain, warned us about it many years ago. The fact is that the overwhelming body of scientific opinion in America and the world believes that human activity is causing climate change in the world. And that is an irrefutable fact. So that clip's from 2003. We're still arguing about this, uh, it's, uh, whether it's factual or not. Some groups are coming around. Some evangelical groups are taking it seriously. Some corporations are taking it seriously, but not seriously enough. We're still acting like this is something we won't have to worry about for 20 years. If we wait 20 years, we're screwed. You think life is hard now? Wait till we don't have enough water. I don't know, how could anyone be opposed to trying to fix this? Even if you run an oil company, you and your children and their children are gonna have to live on the world. There's no planet B. And yet some people, many of whom you saw ranting and raving at the beginning of the show, deny a problem even exists. But at least they have an excuse. Some of them, most of them are crazy. It's the smart ones <laughs> who are evil and reckless. You know the story about the boy who cried wolf? These, they, these are the boys who cry no wolf. Nothing to worry about, no wolf at all. Your soft pink bellies have nothing to fear. And maybe the craziest group of all are these jackholes who admit that climate change is our own fault, but say we can't afford to stop it. Like Rick Scott, the senator from Florida, a state that is basically America's illegal fireworks stand. Rick Scott is worried <laughs> that fighting climate change will destroy jobs, which even if that was true, which it isn't, you know what else will destroy jobs? Armageddon will destroy yeah. a lot of jobs. Our jobs are gonna be hunting for canned food like Viggo Mortensen in the road if we don't fix this. <laughs> and by the way, why is anyone listening to those guys? This is the same group who told you gay marriage was gonna destroy the fabric of society and Obamacare would kill your grandmother with the death panels and COVID would wash away. They're O for everything. You would think these politicians who call themselves conservatives might wanna conserve. I mean, even on the off chance that Al Gore and every reputable climate scientist is right about global warming, bringing fires and floods and all this horrible stuff. Isn't that chance worth being safe and investing in things like renewable energy? Wouldn't that be the conservative <laughs> thing to do? I, because if it isn't, if you don't believe, well, that probably won't happen, well, you shouldn't be wearing a seatbelt either because odds are you're not gonna get hit by a bus driving to work soon. It's weird. The more likely you are to believe God flooded the earth, the less likely you are to believe the ice caps are melting. Maybe that wasn't a story. Maybe that was a warning for us. We are a bunch of golden retrievers sitting in a hot parking lot right now and our owners refuse to roll down the windows. And it's not just Republicans. The Biden administration is still pushing offshore drilling lobbying OPEC and Russia to produce more fossil fuel. Joe Biden's on track to approve more oil and gas permits than any year of the Trump administration. The Democrats in Congress left fossil fuel su subsidies in their big climate bill. Some of these companies, the stuff they're doing, here's one example, ConocoPhillips. ConocoPhillips is one of the world's biggest energy companies. They have a contract to drill oil on the tundra in Northern Alaska. Unfortunately, because of climate change, the tundra is melting, so their plan, and this is not a joke, is to build chillers, these enormous chillers to refreeze the tundra that is melting so they can drill more. And because we aren't paying attention, they're not even ashamed, and quite the contrary. In fact, they seem positively proud of themselves. At ConocoPhillips, we drill oil in the most inhospitable places on Earth, from the baking desert to the frozen tundra. And when burning that oil causes the tundra to become unfrozen, we don't give up. We refreeze that tundra using giant chillers. And when burning the oil to power the chillers causes catastrophic hurricanes and flooding, we don't back down. We build a humongous impenetrable dome over our drills and move inside with all our money. Food runs low, but we don't quit. We turn to cannibalism, feasting on human flesh to keep on drilling until the earth's destroyed and everyone's dead. But do we quit then? Yes, then I guess we quit. ConocoPhillips, 
Maybe we didn't think this through. Well, we do appreciate your honesty. It's just, this is a huge planet-wide emergency. If we don't act now and act big, then there will hardly be a planet left for Jeff Bezos to flee from in his liquid hydrogen fuel dildo rocket. No matter what the, the big corporations and energy companies tell you, we're not going to vegan or Prius our way out of this ourselves. We need action. We need to make this our number one priority. Our leaders aren't going to get serious about saving the planet unless we do. But don't take it from me. Take it from scientists. Take it from real climate scientists. Five years ago, we invited these scientists on our show to warn us about climate change. Now they're back with a new message, and I hope you'll listen carefully because our lives literally depend on this. Hello again. We're climate scientists. Real climate scientists, not actors. Five years ago, we came on Jimmy's show. We told you climate change is real. That it's undeniably caused by human activity. That it's going to be catastrophic. And that we weren't with you. <laughs> totally not with you. I thought we made that clear. But now it's five years later. The globe is hotter. Hurricanes are stronger. Droughts are worsening. Coral reefs are dying. Wildfires are raging. And floods are even floodier. <laughs> so we're back with a new message. And we really hate to say this, but we, we told, told you, you so. so. We <laughs> told you so. We told you we'd be <laughs> by climate change. And now we are, just like we said. Good and hard. Right up the greenhouse gas. It's almost like we knew what we were talking about. Scientists for the win. Guess we weren't with you after all. The planet is exactly as as we told you it would be. You mother As you can see, five years ago, we were here at medium Now we're closer to here, mostly And we only have a few years left to take drastic action before we wind up here, totally and irreparably But we're still not completely There's still time to un some stuff. If we, companies, government, all of us act right now. We can save tens of millions, hundreds of millions of lives. We can call it the great un -ing. Please, we're begging you. For sake. We're not with you. Not with you. We're seriously not with you. I wouldn't with you. Kimmel, he would with you. Let's work together to un, un the, the world. world. Even by scientists who still aren't with you. I think we're going to need a bigger star. <laughs> So, thank you, scientists. Right now, there's only one plan on the table that has any chance of uh, doing even part of what needs to be done, the Build Back Better plan. Over four years, this would put around $2 trillion into switching to a clean energy infrastructure and mitigating the harm we've already done. This could be our last chance. Joe Manchin needs to support it. Kristen Sinema needs to support it. Republicans like Mitt Romney, Liz Cheney, Susan Collins, the ones who step out of line when they need to. Uh, if you care about your grandkids, I know Mitt has about a thousand of them. If you care about them <laughs> and yourselves, hold your nose if you have to and vote for this thing. If you want to talk to the scientists, I can hook you up. And the rest of us, our responsibility is to do everything we can to let these politicians know we want the bill passed. So here's the number to call. Tell the people who represent you that you care about this. It does make a difference when you call. And tell them that they don't do something about this catastrophe that's coming our way, when the food supply gets low, they're the ones we're gonna eat first, okay? <laughs> Congratulations on making it to the end of a YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.